Joe's. Joey is here. We're back at it. We're going to recap week. What was that? Week four. We got to recap. Uh, let's start Thursday night. Lynn Classical went up to Medford and it was over in the first quarter. And I think the things John Naskey and Brian Vaughn Jr. are doing on the field right now is kind of some, is something to talk about because those two are lighting it up right now. Yeah. You and I were just talking. <laughs> You know, behind the scenes, yeah. and we were saying if there was a, a Lynn MVP, Nasky and Vaughn, they're they're in the conversation. Yeah. And I think classical last week in week four, it's kind of like a two nut in boxing. They didn't. It wasn't the hardest of matchups, but they were supposed to go in and win, and they did exactly what they did. They showed off their their skills and their versatility, and the Rams got it done. And that's what you have to do when you play in a team that you feel you're better than. You just don't gotta give them any hopes that they're gonna win this game. And Classical let that be known in the first quarter. And then this I knew they let it be known. After they scored their second touchdown, they kicked the onside kick and recovered. And marched right down the field two plays later and scored again. Yeah. So it was just like, they took their foot off the gas a little bit. Coach Vaughn talked about that just because they had that big lead. So they took a foot off the gas, but Overall, he liked how offensively and defensively how they, they were focused in that first quarter and built that big lead. And yeah, the, these guys, they, they're not letting that Peabody loss really affect them. They've, they've grown from that Peabody game a lot. Yeah. yeah so. and, and John, I, I actually gave him Athlete of the Week. I thought. That's two he, weeks uh, in a row as a classical player, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was Brian, and now it's John. Um, but for good reason. It's a yeah. dynamic duo. And something I love, his three touchdowns are very different. Yeah. One was kind of uh, he threw it in a bird basket. Yeah, like he only the way Vaughn threw it where only John was going to catch it right in the yeah. bird basket. Another he showed off his speed. Another yeah. was a screen pass yeah. or something. Yeah. So, yeah, man, he can do it all. Yeah, he's he's uh, definitely making a case for uh, all state player. Like making a case. So, um, they they're back they're back at Manning this Friday. They they're hosting Malden, which I think it should be another one, another victory for them because. They keep playing this pace. We got we got a clash at the end of at the end of the season, regular season with them, with them in um in Everett for that GBL title. If these two teams continue to play the way they're playing and they go in with the they go in with each with one loss, that'll be for the GBL title. So when Everett came to Manning Field last year to play classical, the Rams played really well yeah. for losing by the score they lost by. I, I think it was you know a twenty something point game. Yeah. But they were in the red zone. They they turned the ball over. It just it wasn't as bad as the score showed. That you game, that game. All I remember, I said to myself in that game because they came up with the big pass play to start off. They got in the red zone. That, I said to myself, them not scoring on that first possession. I think that just it it could have turned what would have been like a great momentum shift. It turned it to uh, it swung everything Everett's way because I think they turned the ball over and then everything just swung Everett's way. So I think yeah. When that game comes, we'll talk more about that. But yeah, that Absolutely. game, yeah, that game definitely. Uh, and then we move on to uh, to Friday, where Lynn English ended their drought. They they landed their little four game skid. They got on no three. I'm sorry, three, three. They got on the winning the winning side of things. These guys remembered what happened to them last year when they went to Revere, because that last year they went to Revere. They were they had a lot of confidence. They felt like they were gonna have put, put together a good game. And it, nothing, nothing, nothing went well that game. Nothing went well. They lost 47 nothing. And then this year, they remember that and they used that for this year. And everything I, everything I say about this team was happened. Offensively, short passes, get the guys, get the guys with the short passes, yards after catch. That's what they did. The run game, solid defense, good all around performance. And their defense sustained everything because the first couple like there was a couple games the defense had a good half but it wasn't sustained throughout the quarter that game it was sustained throughout the game you know you and i have to be real here we both didn't pick english but no. i'm more than happy to be wrong and i did say they were going to turn it around as the season went on so i'm happy to see that came to fruition i think a lot of times usually i'm an x's and o's guy where whichever side wins that battle is going to win the game but i thought not only did they have the X's and O's last week, they had the energy. And they were attitude, they were fired up yeah. between Anthony LaFrada, the head coach, and the assistants and the team. After the game, it just showed. They were ecstatic heading in, and it showed on the scoreboard. Yeah, and 
That was good. I'm telling you that 47 nothing uh, cuz I heard I heard one of the coaches yelling remember 47 nothing remember 47 nothing and I just like offensively I just like what they did offensively as far as just like they weren't trying to do the drop backs and launch the deep ball it was you know three step drop three step drops get the ball out let your playmakers make plays and that's what happens and I'm hoping that that happens going forward because they got a chance to make it two in a row this Friday when they go up to Greater Lawrence. So uh, I just want them to keep the consistency and it'll, it'll make for an interesting end of the, end of the second half of the season for them. Uh, Lintec, Lintec. Woo, Lintec, they made it. They, they, uh, they finished their non-conference part of the schedule, three and one, lost a tough one this August, but the shut out Boston English. It was another, another flawless performance, offense, defense, and special teams by the Tigers. Yeah, they didn't pass much, but they didn't have to. No. I, I'm not sure if they did pass at all. I don't think so. Um, you know, I was talking to Coach Runner after the game, and he was saying that he and his athletic director, Adolph Gracial, who's a great guy, they're both great guys, by the way, and they were saying, you know, our first four games, we're going to set them up so we can see how we measure after them. Yeah. And they went 3-1. and one. Their only loss was to a very good Saugus team, and... They're excited. It's looking good for them. It's looking good. As long as they could, they're going into conference play, they're going in conference play with a lot of confidence, a lot of confidence, and it's a building for something because now you're. This is that part of the season where you got to position, you could position yourself for a playoff spot to possibly get a home game, and he has their focus. The coach has their focus, and the players also seem to understand that. Like they seem to know, like all right, we. Put that game aside now. It's time. Let's let's refocus. Let's like, see what's ahead of us. If we do these things, I think we'll be they'll be fine uh, for for a good playoff, for a good ranking for the po for the postseason. That's it. And then who else we got? We got one more, right? We've got Kip and St. Mary's. All right, Kip Academy and St. Mary's Hurst. We're gonna go Kip Academy. And I don't know if y'all follow me on Instagram or or not, but Mornell Castro, I've been singing his praises since before the season started. What this young man is doing on the field, people really have to pay attention to what he's doing on the field. Just, he is dynamic. He can score at every level. He can either receiving, either running, even if you put him at quarterback. Defensively, he's great as well. Like, he's one of the best all-around players we have, and he's just been showing it this season. He's scored a touchdown every game. Yeah, if you go on his Twitter and watch his, his mixtapes, they're impressive <laughs> and uh i'm very happy for him yeah and happy for the program they seem to be doing things right they lost week one to saint mary's and ha look how they responded yeah so um no excited for kip I, I think they keep winning they keep winning late those are signs of a, a team that's going to go far yeah and and in my opinion, replicate what they did last season and going to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and, and I think like since those guys got that experience at Gillette, I think they know what they have to do. Like they know what they have to do. Uh, injuries aside, they just know like who who's going to lead them, who's going to lead them, and who's going to help them make a deep postseason run. And it starts with it starts with Mornell Castro, Jovan Machado, and everybody else follows suit. And it seems like they have the. They have the good pieces and they have the relationships and just like the bond, the team bond that is helping them. And you can see it when they play because, man, these guys, fun to watch, very fun to watch. Once, I, not supposed to root for a team, but that's, those guys, I, I root for those guys. They're, they're, really, they're doing something special over there. Last but not least, uh, it just wasn't St. Mary's Day. <laughs> It was not their day over there at Fenwick. I mean, it's a big rivalry game, but it just was not their day. In the Spartans' defense, it's been no one's day against Fenwick this season. Mm -hmm. The Crusaders are 4-0 and doing it in very dominating fashion. You know, 40-0, yeah. 50-0 games. Um, it was a matchup of two solid programs, two great coaches in Dave Woods and, and Sean Driscoll. Yep. And I think Fenwick just got the better of them. Uh, I mean, look at last year. It was a double overtime game, right? Yeah. So th I think it'll be that close again, but St. Mary's is on the younger side. So, yeah. And yeah. Fenwick was at home. It was. And Fenwick, granted, they're not going to be a lot. They're not going to be in the postseason this year because of 
you know, uh, all this stuff going on there. But I think they still are out here, out there playing to try to prove, to try to prove something. And for St. Mary's, I mean, it, it's tough to lose to your rival, but it, it's a, sometimes I think this is one of those games. Sometimes you just have to, you just have to bury the film and be like, it, it just wasn't what our best day out there. So we're just gonna go. You know, try to get it back this Friday when, you know, get back on the winning side this Friday. But, yeah, it was it was just not their day. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. Which they will, yeah. in my opinion, at home versus Bishop Stang. Yep, yeah, yeah, they got to bounce back. They still got a good ranking for right now. I've seen the rankings. They still got a good ranking for themselves. So, they just got to start, win out, win out, win the games they're supposed to win. After Friday, the Bishop Stang game, they'll be 3-2, and two, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I, I predict they'll win. So, 3-2 and two with a young team that's dealt with some injuries. Not bad. Not not bad at all. Uh, y'all catch us on the sidelines. We were me and him are manning all the time. If he's not there, he's somewhere else. But y'all catch us <laughs> on, on the sideline and don't be mad at us for sharing our views. It's just an opinion. Don't take it personal. It's business, not personal. Remember that. <laughs> My man. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. I ain't gonna get you in trouble though. I promise. I won't get you in trouble. <laughs> I'll just, no. I'll just, I'm just messing you, with you. Do you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll see you guys. Yeah. <laughs>